wonderful petition. I heard about it in New York, my gosh. And I told, you know, fa fam family and friends, I was at the time, oh my gosh, something's happening in Britain. They're talking about the Windrush generation. And, and so I spread the news in New yeah. York at the time. Okay. So that's wonderful. We've been talking about um, particular cases and um, this petition that you've done, wonderful petition, 179,000 and rising. And now we're going to be talking about um, the uh, clinics, the meetings, the events, and also about the Windrush Justice Fund. Okay. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so in terms of clinics, I mean, I think that's quite, the key thing is uh, as a result of the petition, then there have there've been debates in Parliament f over the last two weeks. So I think the most important debate was, um, there have been three key debates. The first one when David Lamy tabled a question, and that's when he made his iconic speech. Yes. Uh, and I think a lot of people said, wow, David, where, where'd that come from? Is that I am here because you're yes. here? So, and and that we was, are here because you are Yeah, so it was quite a powerful speech <laughs> oh, you made. And I, and I think from that time onwards, that's when a lot of parliamentarians started to put pressure on the government. Yeah. Because you have to bear in mind that the petition wasn't simply a petition. A lot of people up and down the country and the community yeah. wanted to felt angry and outraged. I felt, why is it that the, the government are picking on the most loyal part that, you know, Caribbean people are loyal, hard-working. Yeah. We've made a contribution to Britain over the last 70 years in terms of the politics, media, science, technology. But the fact we were uh, invited. And we were invited, and we're citizens. Me, you know? Yes. You were invited to come yes. over to help out, and then yeah. all of us So it had a reaction. So as a result of that, three things happened. The government made apologise five times. Theresa May apologised. The former Home Minister, Home Office Minister Amber Rudd apologised, and then then she had to resign. Then she had to resign because we, f we found out that the government had misled the public. They had targets, national regional targets, we said they didn't know about. They'd, and then what was what was key things actually? They changed legislation in 2014, which had an adverse impact, and they knew that this would have an impact on the ruinous generation, yes. and they mixed us up with illegal immigrants, yes. even though we are citizens. That's right. And, that's, and that's you know, right. so as a result of that, the government now have done three things. They're going to they said they're going to pay compensation to anyone that's been affected by their mess. So people who've either been deported back to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. people who've been threatened with deportation, have lost their jobs, or have lost access to benefits, or been made homeless. In one, ca in one case, uh, a, a, young, a gentleman in his 50s committed suicide yes. um, um, of Grenadian uh, background. I have been told, Patrick, that they made more than one case. Well, but, yeah, no, yeah, yes, so, yeah. and and also so uh, so that's a f and so as a result of that, the government are now saying they're going to sort this out. Yeah. The government have created a, a task force and a hotline so people can ring and they have said that they can guarantee insulting people's citizenship in two weeks. Yeah. Um, some people have come forward, yeah. but the reason why there are legal advice clinics being led by the Black Culture Archives in partnership with a number of uh, lawyers, black including, lawyers, so, yeah. including yeah. some of black lawyers, and also the organisation JCWI, I've also got their own advice lines and organised surgeries, is most people don't trust the Home Office. I was just going to say that. You know, because the mess you? Well, precisely. You know? you're, so yeah. I think it's important for people to have independent, free legal advice, and that's why I've launched this Windrush Justice Fund. So there'll be surgeries that will cover the cost of lawyers giving free advice in the community so people can feel confident yeah. that when they go to the Home Office they have the right information to ha at hand. Yes. And so I think that's quite, I mean, I've raised £13,000 in the last two weeks and it's rising yeah. and I think it's important for people to go to the clinics um, and also and then they, then they can go to the Home Office hotline and, and sort out the status as yeah. well. Yeah. I think it's quite critical. I think we have to do this. I know people might say why should we but it's important that people and a lot of people haven't come forward because they haven't you know, there's are, there are cases of people who've been embarrassed and ashamed to, you know, like, to tell their children that I, I haven't sorted out my status. Oh, no. So there's lots of people who are living because of embarrassment, yeah. not come forward. People have to come forward, Mass, they've got to sort yeah. out their status. I think it's quite critical. If anything, watch, people watching the show tonight, is if you're, not, if you're in doubt, get free independent advice and sort out your status. Yes. Definitely, definitely. definitely. You, you spoke about the clinics and, and you spoke about the black lawyers. Well, I, I can give out some information on that. There's going to be a series of uh, Brixton Windrush Legal Clinics. It's going to be held at the Black Cultural Archives throughout the month of May. Um, the address is 1 Windrush Square, Brixton, London, SW2 1EF. 
That's 1 Windrush Square, Brixton, London, SW21EF. Telephone number 020 373 757 8500. 0203 757 8500. Or log on to their website. It's probably easier. You can check out all the dates there. Black Cultural Archives, all one word. Black Cultural Archives. That's a good one to go to. Yes. Because and it, also they're legal eagles. Well, yeah, well yeah. so I mean so BC I've been working with them and they've got they've got a good team of lawyers, local solicitors from South London, um, they've got national uh, organizations involved. JCWI um, who they, they say core business to do immigration cases, they're they're gonna also have surges around the country yes. because I think there's a lot of people that, even though a lot of people in London have been affected, lots of people in the Midlands and the north, of course. Bristol as well. And I think we don't know the figures, but I think it could be as much as 10, 15,000 people who need to sort out their status. So it's really, really critical that people do that. And to do that now. To do and they have right to do it now, now yes. To do it right now. Can we get more information a bit about um, yourself uh, when we talk about the generation? Yeah. I said that, that you were the founder. Can we just let the viewers know a bit more about that? Okay, well, so over the last 15 years, I've done a lot of work around doing family genealogy, yes. promoting the heritage of African Caribbean so communities, great. about tracing our family heritage. Yes understand our identity. I did a big campaign some years ago called 100 Great Black Britons. Yes. One of the things I'm launching this year is I'm, la I'm launching a family history board game. I have to come back and tell you a bit more about that. Wow, never it's said. called I never said, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> it's called, it's going to be called the Every Generation Family History Game, Wind, Wind, Windrush Edition. And this is about storytelling, reminiscing. It's about our history. And what's quite clear um, around this Windrush debacle or scandal is I think for the first time ever, the great British public now understand Windrush and our contribution. Yeah, yeah. People, you know, probably people, good, people have learned more actually. about Windrush in the last two weeks, in the last 40 years it's put true. together, ironically. Yeah, so true. I think, so one of the positives you can call that out of this is that we can now say that the Caribbean have made a difference in Britain and we need to be recognised. Mm. One of the key things I've been lobbying for years is a Windrush Day, that we should, on the 22nd of June, there should yeah. be a national holiday yeah. celebrating the Windrush the Windrush generation contribution and also other migrant communities because yeah. often when people work, talk about migration it's always seen as a negative but actually look at it we have contributed to Britain it's ten just times just and over and we're still not being recognized yeah. and this Windrush debacle highlights that our history still is hidden yes. we're not valued we're not respected and that's why it's important that not only people sort out their rights and they, they receive compensation but the government and national institutions recognise that we have made a difference in Britain and we should respect us. Of course, definitely. Where can people um, make their donations to the Windrush so, Justice Fund? So the Windrush Justice you can go on to GoFundMe, uh, which is a crowdfunding website, and you just do, and it's called the Windrush Justice Fund, or you can do a Google search, Windrush Justice Fund. All, that, all the money will be going to organisations like JCWI, Black Culture Car Archives and other organisations who are organising free independent legal searches around the country mm -hmm. so people can access their rights. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the government will change the law and to enshrine in law that the Windrush generation and their children are British citizens forever. We have to yeah, bind safe. not this government but yeah. future governments. Yeah. We don't have a situation in 5 to 15 years time that we're going to go back to a scenario whereby we're not quite sure of your status in Britain. You know, you know, it, this has implications for the EU well, nationals and Brexit as well. Yes. So yeah. they've got to sort, it out, sort us out first. Yeah, of course, of course. Right. You're, you're part of the. Um, when we spoke, spoke about the Parliament, we spoke about David Lammy. Yes. For those not, not you know, au fait, David Lammy is MP for um, constituency in the north of London. It's called Clottenham. Yeah, and um, he stood up in Parliament and he had a right or go the former Home Secretary, but you was behind him. You were no, sitting behind him? No, no. The that, second one. So he, so as a result of the petition, yeah. uh, the reason why I went to the government website you to create the petition, that. when you have over 100,000 signatures, that you triggers a debate, in, yes. the, there's a debate in Parliament. Yeah. So last week, Monday, the 30th of April, there was a special debate about my petition, and David Lammy spoke, again, very passionately, as well as other MPs spoke, and they they actually approved my petition, yes. which the government minister, uh, Caroline Noakes, the immigration minister, said, we support this petition. This is fantastic. It's, it's probably history, but now this needs to be put in law. Yeah. Proper compensation, not just financial compensation, because some, a lot of the families that's been affected by this have gone through depression, anxiety. Just imagine, someone, you get a letter and you're, mm. and you're told you have no rights in this country 
and you need to leave and we don't recognize you yeah. that has an so impact on your mental well-being it is you know and it's just a, you know so a lot i think a lot of indiv family individuals yeah. and not just them but the children and their grandchildren mm. need some support but mm. need all these things to be put in law and what's going to happen society black lawyers and late day solicitors are considering taking class action against the government do you remember what happened to the Mau Mau's? they got compensation for the way they were treated they want to have a similar approach whereby if you look at the five or ten fifteen thousand people who've been affected by this piece of declassification yeah. of us being citizens you, this is a class action case, against it's the it's government this could be it's big it's this it's could be major case. it's a good case you know we, we have to leave patrick we can talk for the whole program. we could do pamela of course we could but we have to leave it there thank you ever no, so much no, patrick. Yes. we are going to be debating this throughout the weeks and weeks to come on the lifestyle show but i had to kick it off with the man that instigated the petition 179,000. So far. And, and, just say, and I just want to say, I want to thank everyone that signed the petition because you made history. It was people power mm -hmm. that forced the government to do a U-turn. Indeed, indeed. Right, we are going to take another break now and put the kettle on and have a cold drink. See you shortly.